good evening one and all and now uh, i'm going to uh, introduce dr uh, professor emilio sir who is the chief guest for this uh, cranio facial identification and uh, future and map uh, directions uh, dr professor emilio he is a forensic odontologist and assistant professor in legal medicine at university of turin italy and graduated in the university of bari italy in 1994 holds post graduate degree in legal medicine forensic sciences and forensic odontology plus a research doctorate degree means phd on analytic morphometry and then expert witness in civil and penal code for dental disputes and professional liability expert before the international penal court and participating odontologist in the interpol dvi forensic odontology sub working group and president and founder of the civil protection association dental team dvi italia and fellow of the american academy of forensic sciences and chairman of forensic odontology for human rights group founded in 2015 and he presented over 100 papers in national and international forensic sciences conferences and meetings and he has invited chief guest and guest speaker since 2006 in several congresses like usa uk nepal indonesia canada and romania too and among which the forensic dentistry session of 2006 fdi world dental congress at shenzhen republic of china and i'm just i have introduced uh, sir as a yes. chief guest here uh as a part of uh, savita dental college and uh, hospitals as a part of uh, oral pathology and microbiology department and uh, as a part of forensic odontology department i am inviting you here sir thank you dr abirami for the presentation but most of all thank you for inviting me to open this uh, webinar i'm very pleased to be here and share this webinar with uh, professor aman choudhry I think he is one of the world leader leaders in the facial reconstruction, and I very happy to join and listen to him. Um, also, it is a, a privilege for us uh, to be here because this allows me to greet all the attendees and present and introduce our association, which is not our; it's your association, because most of the forensic odontologists, but not only odontologists, have joined this association. So um, I'm happy that you leave me the opportunity to present the association, and I thank also Aman for allowing me to to take this ten minutes out of his uh, webinar. <laughs> Uh, the association was uh, started in 2015 it started as a group does it it started as a group while uh, some odontologists were attending the annual scientific meeting we ha we have in the interpol headquarter in lyon now for those of you who are not aware of what interpol is Interpol is is a uh, Interpol is a police international agency it's a police agency with international uh, which does international investigations imagine uh, illegal weapon in drugs uh, human trafficking so these are crimes that unfortunately involve several countries and of course need to have investigations which involves several countries so in order not to duplicate uh, efforts uh, this interpol this international police agencies is a liaison between the diff the several national police agencies in the field of human identification interpol was involved already in the 80s because also human identification specifically the human identification of uh, the victims of a mass disasters could involve as we all are aware unfortunately several nationalities so in the 80s they created uh, a committee dealing uh, on uh, dvi procedure disaster victim identification procedure in order to allow best practice 
and the teamwork where multiple nationalities are involved. The typical example is the tsunami 2004, where we had 32 nationalities involved and odontologists of different nationalities had to work together. So you had Italians with Germans, with Spanish, and of course they could not understand the language, but they could understand the unique way of addressing codes for identification process purposes, which is the Interpol code. So in 2015, we were attending this meeting in Lyon, where we have one of the major headquarters of these police agencies. And I raised the issue of, uh, uh, I raised a question, what about the human rights of the dead? Nobody has had ever addressed this before. I already stressed the importance of respecting the human rights of the dead already in 2012 in another international uh, congress organized by the International Dental Ethics and Law Society. It was in Belgium. And of course, if we go back to the Universal Declaration, it was 1948 which is after the Second World War. So the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was created specifically to improve the relation between people in a peaceful way, in an ethical way. And of course, in that period, nobody was uh, stressing on the issue of the dead. But after the 2011, we had, the, we had to focus on the importance of creating and, and working on multidisciplinary ways in order to achieve positive human identification. This means that when we have human identification, when the process is to give back a name and an identity to an unidentified human remain, you need to work involving all the experts which could offer uh, data to achieve a positive ID. And among these experts, of course, odontologists cannot be ignored as we know that uh, we can achieve a positive ID or we can help in the assisting in assisting a positive ID on an average of 70, 70 80 percent of cases alone or combined with other uh, secondary identifiers. So in 2015 we raised this group which started involving all odontologists who have the passion in the discipline who were available to share and work together also on a humanitarian aspect. And in 2019, we decided that there was the need to create, to have a structure, which was not just a friend, a group of friends, a friendly group, but we needed to have a, a, an association structure with a board, with a president who was elected so that decision could be made democratically among the board members who were elected. So in 2019, we changed our acronym and we create the acronym AFOR, which is Association, that's the A, Forensic Odontology for Human Rights. So we basically are the only international association promoting humanitarian forensic odontology. We, as oral healthcare provider, healthcare professionals, we are aware on the need of promoting oral health on people who don't have uh, the opportunity to go to a dentist. I don't know the situations worldwide, but in, other, in some countries like Italy, for example, dentistry is mainly a private uh, issue. So people sometimes have uh, difficulties in uh, having access to oral care. So as dentists, we already offer uh, humanitarian assistance in what is called uh, uh, community dentistry, which uh, serves uh, addressing smiles uh, and, uh, and treating teeth of uh, people who are families who cannot support dental treatments. In the field of forensic, we can also act as volunteers. We can, we can act as volunteers offering our experience and expertise in the field of human identification because there is also uh, uh, the need to identify the so many unidentified human remains which are still left without a name and an identity. And uh, for those of you who have a juridic uh, background or training, we are all aware that we have a passport because we have a name and a date of birth. If we don't have a name and a date of birth, we cannot have any ID uh, documents. So the, the, the ratio is 
in order to have our rights respected, in order to have the respect of the human rights of the dead, we need to give back to an unidentified human remain. We need to give back a name and an identity. And the other issue is the human rights of the relatives of the next of kin who are waiting for the, to know what is uh, the, the, the missing person. Another big issue is not only the human rights of the dead so that they are respected in their will, in their religious belief, in their belongings, in their uh, civil rights, but also the human rights of the beloved, of the families who are still waiting for the missing person. A missing person can be alive, of course, but after so many years, we can have, uh, uh, we have to start thinking that maybe the missing person is not alive anymore. And unfortunately, there are thousands of human remains and uh, unidentified cadavers who are collected. For example, we have so many migrants that, have, that don't make it to the other end they travel from Africa, they try to seek to arrive in the European border, but there are thousands that don't make it to the other end and they are unidentified and recovered from the Mediterranean Sea. But this is an issue of any single cases, case where you need to identify human remains. So we are promoting humanitarian forensic odontology best practice of human identification when you have unidentified human remains. And when we speak about best practice, we, we promote and stress on the application of the Interpol standards, because Interpol standards were initially meant for DVI, Disaster Victim Identification. I was there in 2013 stressing on, the, on one aspect. We cannot have two ways of managing a human identification. If it is a DVI, this, which means multiple casualties, or if we have one single recovered human remain, we should apply the same standard. This means that if we achieve a positive ID, applying and collecting primary identifiers, DNA, dental and fingerprints, plus secondary identifiers when available, these standards must be applied also in any single uh, autopsy for the purpose of human identification. This is what we call best practices in human identification. And to this regard, the efforts that we are putting as experts go beyond dentistry. And the occasion of this meeting that we have today with Professor Chaudhry gives us the opportunity to listen to another resource that we can rely when we need to achieve an identification. And this is very interesting because our work is not meant to be done only in between ourselves. We need to start considering the collaborations with not only other experts, but even media. Because one of the aspects that missing family associations work on is also the use of journals and uh, magazines and uh, TV shows in order to circulate pictures of the people who have been uh, who is missing. And on the other far, on the other side, we will listen to an expert who will tell us how to circulate the picture of somebody who is no more uh, recognizable visually, but the facial reconstruction can be, the facial approximation can be a resource when you really need to, to put all the efforts that you can put in order to achieve a positive ID. And this is very interesting because uh, the concept is not only respect the technical aspect, but also to respond to our conscience. Do we, are we doing, what we all, all we can do to achieve a positive ID? Yes, we have done a dental autopsy. Okay, we have collected post-mortem data. We have collected the fingerprints. We have collected DNA. We have collected dental data. But this is only one phase, as you know, of the human identification process. In order to have also the assistance of the public, of the people, facial approximation is another resource which allows also the search for possible candidate in the identification process of our unidentified human remains. With that said, 
the association AFOR has a, a website, AFOR.org. You can become, uh, I mean, AFOR, uh, uh, the difference with, the, with our initial group in 2015 is that we are not only odontologists nowadays. We started as odontologists, but then when we became an association in 2019, we allow anyone who is involved or interested in human identification and age estimation to be part of the association. So the association is not only composed by odontologists, we have anthropologists, we have fingerprints experts, we have uh, forensic pathologists, and so we are open to anyone who is uh, who has the same passion in working and using forensic sciences also as a tool within the humanitarian forensics which means anyone who is expert and is willing to share experience and time and eventually even be able to be deployed voluntarily whenever there is the the need for human identification, but also age estimation. Everybody knows who is involved in odontology is aware of the other very strong uh, service that we can do in case works, which is the age estimation. The age estimation is so important for the respect of the rights of a child because we are so fundamental in assessing uh, a childhood or an adult uh, when there are uh, these, uh, these reasons. So anyone who is interested in having more information can uh, write to me because I am the current president, but uh, we will have in September an online e-symposium. We will uh, organize in the first e-electronic symposiums of our association, which will as the title uh, rescue and dignity of the dead which is a, a, a symposium which will involve keynote speakers from the field of odontology as well as from the field of uh, forensic anthropology this uh, symposium will be on the 23rd and 24th of september is organized uh, as to our decision by the president elect which is Professor Emlata Pandey from Mumbai. She was organizing this conference, also joining the simultaneous event of the Indian Association of Forensic Odontology. And uh, this symposium will open also to uh, oral communication and poster communication, uh, but they will be strictly selected. We will not be having more than 30 contributors because we have to stay in the two day today's program. And also these contributions will be published on an international journal. Uh, if you are interested to join or if you are simply willing to know more, you can write to me or you can uh, follow our social media profiles. We have a, a Facebook fan page as well as a, a profile in Twitter, in Instagram, and also a LinkedIn page. And of course, the website. Um, uh, right now, give you just to give you a few data about our association, we have reached almost 100 uh, members. We have uh, 30 countries uh, uh, represented because we have members from all countries. Uh, um, another aspect I have to uh, have to um, have to tell you to complete. Uh, the presentation is that we decided last year that in order to become a for member we you need to pay a lifetime membership fee of 50 us dollars but we when i say we i mean the board of the association we are also um, um, open to evaluate uh, uh, applications from developing countries and void the membership fee if, uh, ne if necessary. Uh, the, me the, the membership fee is of course, just to simply uh, support the expenses we have uh, in, the, in the running of the website and uh, other issues because we have an annual award, an annual humanitarian forensic odontology award, which we issue to uh, people, to experts who need to be 
rewarded for their work either in humanitarian forensics or in the promotion of forensic odontology. We all know that we still need to work to promote forensic odontology worldwide. There are still countries where odontologists are not yet involved as they should, especially in the DVI teams. But I am extremely optimistic because this event today is another example of how our discipline is being circulating, is being promoting best practice in human identification. Again, I would like to thank Dr. Abirami for inviting me and allowing me to present the association. And uh, I would like to leave to Dr. Ch uh, Dr. Amarna Chaudhry and I will listen to you. Please excuse me, I will uh, change the, the, the connection. Enjoy the rest of the webinar. I am sure you will find what uh, Professor Chaudhry will present extremely interesting and uh, you will probably be stimulated in following him in his uh, path to this discipline of fascial approximation. Thank you again, you, Dr. Abirami and the staff for organizing the, this event. Dr. Abirami, you have uh, your uh, ma microphone off. Thank you, Dr. Emilio, sir. Yes, sir. Now I'm introducing... Maybe we can the... take a picture of this. Uh, let me take a screenshot. Yes, yeah, sir. Please, please. Okay. Namaste. Perfect. I'll, I'll share it in our media. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. If you're Samarika, if you agree. Yeah, sure. Please, why not? Well, now we have to be very careful about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let me introduce Dr. Samarika Dahal. She is a UK trained forensic odontologist who has specialized in human identification as an Australian Awards Fellow. And she is a national and international trained for the past four years and having trained over 1,000 participants from more than 10 countries. She is an expertise in uh, mass fatality management, disaster victim identification, and disaster risk reduction. She has organized and participated as invited speaker and moderator in panel discussions and conferences of forensic odontology and team building communication skills related to design management of the dead and the hospital uh, preparedness to emergencies also she is an expertise and she has worked as regional expert in various government institutes and NGO and in uh, INGO to provide them knowledge and skill under capacity building projects of South Asia also she is currently uh, Vice President of uh, Nepalese Association of Oral Pathology and she is a member of Disaster Victim Identification Team Nepal since 2011 and currently working member of Interpol Disaster Victim Identification Subworking Group and other than that she has numerous publications and books contributed uh, chapters in international and national journals. We are welcoming you ma'am here to this platform. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's been a long time. It's such a challenging time. And I think it's so good to be back, to be reconnected to friends and discuss about forensic odontology and take one step closer to the dignified management of the dead. So I'm happy to be here. And it's such a pleasure to be here. And, I'm, and it is also such a pleasure to introduce our Dr. Aman Chaudhary, who's a star and expertise in craniofacial identification. Dr. Aman Chaudhary is a professor at Department of Oral Pathology, Faculty of Dentistry, Jamia Milia, Islam at New Delhi. He's been actively involved in academics and research since 2004 after completion of his MDS from Pune. Dr. Chaudhary has a PG diploma in hospital management from National Institute of Family Welfare and Health, New Delhi, and is a fellow of Indian Board of Forensic Odontology. He has been trained in 3D and 2D forensic, 
reconstruction at the center, Central Forensic Science Laboratory, Chandigarh, and 3D computerized forensic reconstruction from the University of Tobingen, Germany. He's a founder secretary of Indian Association of Craniofacial Identification and is, general, and is secretary general of Indo-Pacific Academy of Forensic Odontology. He's authored, co-authored many papers in peer review international and national journals in his specialization. He has traveled to around the globe for his academic ventures and passion for interdisciplinary approach towards forensic and elite sciences. So he's been there, he's been around, he's everywhere promoting forensic odontology and it's such a pleasure to have you. And thank you for having me as your moderator. It's always a pleasure to listen to you and learn from you. Thank you so much, Dr. Samarika. Okay. Uh, first things first, I would like to um, thank, I will see my screen from top, Dr. Abirami for organizing this. Dr. Emilio for such an elaborate introduction. You have made my uh, job much easier. You have already introduced the rights of the dead which are lacking in many countries. Uh, then comes my friend, dear friend, Dr. Samarika from my neighborhood country. Um, she uh, introduced me, thank you for that. And then is the platform which we are using today. So uh, you know, uh, everything, everybody asks you whenever you're traveling, where is your ID? The, uh, just feeling that you know uh, is that you know you are somebody is not enough nowadays. So imagine when the person is dead, will just seeing it, uh, somebody will allow that this is this? No. You need a positive identification. You need a personal identification. Uh, so uh, what exactly we are here today is to. Uh, do identification means craniofacial identification. The, the upper part of the body will be used for identification. We will try to build up. We will try to do things and try to um, give a name to the skull. You know, the the name to the skull which is lacking because um, because of the uh, dismembering. Whether it was uh, whether the flesh is missing, whether it got putrefied, it got uh, uh, you know it got eaten up by the maggots. So, so many things which happen. So, what, how to give a name to the skull will be the agenda here today. So, craniofacial structures will be used. And what is the future of such science? Because lots of technology is evolving. So, what, what exactly will go on will be the agenda. So, what is my training? I, I have been already introduced to what training I have had. Uh, various sites, I have missed out a few, but uh, uh, various mentors, I can see Dr. Sanjeev, Dr. Jasuja, Dr. Ashit, Dr. Osgur Bulut, and uh, uh, this is what I've been trained in. Then this is my working team. Uh, again, Dr. Jasuja, Dr. Priyanka, Dr. Pika, myself. If you see, this is all multidisciplinary. Dr. Emilio just said that she, anybody is welcome who's, who can see his signs, his length through his lens, can see the identification is most welcome. And that's, that's how we have integrated. You see orthodontist, you see a forensic science person, you see a dental anatomy person and myself, a oral pathologist who works together for, uh, for uh, positive identification. We try to match and we try to build up uh, the research behind it. We try to build up the data behind it. We try to work and publish together. So this is a combination of art and science. You know, if, I, if you see the top two scientists, which are there, Karen Taylor and C. Wilkinson, these two are premier, pioneer, and ladies take the lead here. And down also you see Dr. Selma Aka, Aka in Turkey, and then you have Dr. Jasuja next to her. So a uh, uh, lot of art and lots, lots of science. It might appear like FBI to you, you know, FBI thing being followed or, or something like a Hollywood being followed and, uh, you know, sci-fi fiction. It might appear rocket science to you, but no, it's totally and totally pure science which is being followed, uh, where you need to have a blend of uh, art and science. You need to have a personal identification. Now, this personal identification is defined as establishing the identity of an individual. The need for personal identification arises uh, in the cases of, so you know that there are uh, there can be natural disasters, there can be man-made disasters. Uh, now, uh, the need, need for personal identification is there. Now, this 
can be due to earthquakes, tsunamis, landslide, man-made disasters, terrorist attacks. Uh, you must have heard about Bhim Singh murder, uh, the, the bomb blast. You must have heard about Rajiv Gandhi assassination. You must have heard about. I'm talking about Indian. You must have heard about Nirbhaya. So these all were requiring some kind of forensic or ontology, some kind, even Virappan. He was he was he was uh, his identity for identity was established through his ear. So a lot of uh, you know uh, forensic people are very street smart. They will use anything of yours as an ID. So uh, that's what is the basis of identification. And in craniofacial identification or build up, what we do is we use the framework. The framework is the skull. The craniofacial bones will be used as the 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 pivot on which we work on. The need to identify dead is obvious for social. and uh, uh, social and medical legal purpose now various techniques of biological anthropology are employed um then uh, you know you, you know you should know how to use the how to how to manipulate how to how to work what is chain of custody uh, how to take the uh, you know the data which is coming how to use it how to use it in anthropology uh, you need to have uh, the foremost task of achieving the personal identification is to establish whether the skeletal remains are human or not very important to understand what is human body and that's where first year dental anatomy first year human anatomy comes into picture of uh, bds mds and dds what whatever course you are doing so the big force if somebody ask me what big force you are doing whether you are doing uh, dental profiling or you are doing a skull profiling what is the big four things which you do are, 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 are age 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 age, age. Uh, I, I think I mean. So the four, four, um, four uh, uh, things which we are supposed to look for are the age, sex, stature, and ethnicity. We will understand when you read about it. When you, when you, since we are programmed, we are being projected from Chennai. So I have added a few subsets from Tamil. I am adding some few things from Tamil, and this is. On the temple there, a very famous temple there. So, um, what we are going to be discussing today is osteology, dental profiling, skull alignment, FSTD, uh, facial reconstruction, and 3D virtual world uh, reconstruction. Now, what I am trying this is the virtual world which I will be discussing later on. That will be the later part of the. I will be just touching it. You cannot master this in a 40, 45, uh, you know, uh, uh, 40, 45. minutes what exactly you need to do what what exactly goes on here is very important that various methods of facial reconstruction based on hypothesized relationship between the skin and the hard structure is the main uh, main uh, you know uh, the aim behind it how you how you going to do this there are sufficient um, there, there is sufficient matter there is sufficient scientific basis to it and the presentation will refer to different methods how to go about doing the reconstruction this will be uh, required for a positive identification it includes superimposition of the skull on the uh, on the picture of an individual it also includes rebuilding these these are the two opposite things or it, they were they work op in a opposite direction each face is unique there are 7 billion faces 7 billion faces you see such beautiful faces on the screen such beautiful ladies which you have been which have you have been appreciating all all through your hollywood journey so which you do so these are faces of different types and that's what is the biometrics about there are uh, there they are human faces that can be used for verification process uh, uh, the human faces have more variation than any other species the human faces are very peculiar and that's how your iphone open up you just show your face and then open up so uh, that is important you should be and when we discuss various domains are there there are physical anthropology forensic anthropology facial anthropology archaeology forensic art anatomy craniofacial facial identification forensic sciences for forensic dentistry so so many things open up so many things so many people so many uh, domains can look at the same thing um by different lens whatever you are trained in so various science can be uh, applied so uh, can you establish the identity just by seeing the skull can you you cannot even uh, you know the, the best of the people who are experts it takes time for them it it takes 70 to 80% they can match or maybe uh, a lots of lots of signs in so now you can identify 
no you cannot this is a personal identification you can do so this is also not the way this is also not the way so what to do that what we suggested was include a dentist to your team they include a dentist why because he knows how to manipulate the the material science he knows he knows how to read cbct data he knows how to read opgs lateral sets he can he has lot of cast he knows what it lo looks like to feel so i presented a paper i got it published as well uh, the proposal initial in belgium where dr emilio was also there in a lewin we 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 were there and uh, uh, this is the paper i presented and then the same thing was published later on i modified it and i uh, went ahead and got published and as per the indian in in an indian perspective that a person is required a person is very important the dentist is very important in the team of forensic facial approximation so what are the take home messages firstly the dentist require uh, to be placed in the team of ffa then ffa is a blend of science and art it establishes basic uh, processes of 2d and 3d where you can be involved a dentist can be involved you should start collecting data population based pure population based and then you should have groups to collaborate we we are a we are a small family we we believe in vasudevai kutumb so what does that mean that means that we are a small family as per the upanishads long ago 5000 years ago so we have declared that we are a small family let's let's collaborate and that's what is the basis of forensic facial uh, approximation we need to know about heart tissue we know to we need to know about soft tissue we need to know about the bones growth and development and facial proportions i'll just skip through you are all equipped about growth and development of the the uh, the the face and the facial structures first year will play a vital role here you should know where how what is the difference between growth and development take help from an orthodontist he will tell you what is the difference from growth growth is just increase in numbers development is actually uh, you know how it's measurable kind of changes it is just as uh, the cell multiplication and cell uh, differentiation that's what exactly happens here the growth and so you should know the caudal plane you should know what is the size what is the difference you should know uh, what are the proportions in which, which the uh, the body grows uh, uh, you know we go back so so many years to the same place where dr emilio the country where dr emilio belongs that is the place uh, a great scientist leonardo da vinci he was an artist as well so this is actually uh, growth development the proportions uh you should know uh, uh, the proportion of the face changes as the as the person uh, uh, age increases the mandible size is is dominating is becomes the half the the lower half becomes the half because most of the skull growth has already taken place so you have to draw in proportions you have to work in proportions here you should know that there are some head gears which are there the the head gear is uh, responsible for uh, various uh, kind of gradients the the most probable uh, uh, you know the the they are required for the uh, taking the support of the skull and pulling the jaws so very important that you should have a history what exactly and there uh, there are something called as bolton analysis there is bolton brush uh, then is there is michigan growth study which happened i don't expect you to uh, read all of them or you you need to study all of them but what you need to uh, uh, understand here is that you should be aware that such things happen and you should involve an orthodontist in this percentages of growth the the kind of growth takes place in what direction what it looks like how the mandible grows downward and forward how the skull grows forward how uh, the the expansion of the uh, skull takes place especially the craniofacial bones is very important here that uh, you know what happens here you should know how uh, uh, i i i believe that you know uh, when you are studying in first year dental uh, uh, the the general anatomy uh, the general growth the, or maybe the growth and development of skull of mandible the 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 ears the how the
I think there's some technical error. Yeah. Let him join because he already said that he's having some storm outside. Yeah, you mentioned it's weather is not good. Yes, ma'am. Let him join. Yes, ma'am. Now tell me about the way Howard is working in Nepal. Okay. Uh, Nepal, uh, I started doing uh, this DVI work since 2011. Yes, uh, from the point of a plane crash that occurred in Nepal, that's how my first exposure of uh, DVI. Since then, we've had earthquake, we've had uh, flood, we've had plane crashes, we have some innumerable incidents where I had the opportunity to work with the team and do the noble job of identifying the dead and handing over to the loved ones. It's quite a challenge, a lot of work, blood and sweat, but the end result when you hand over the body, that's no joy more than the happiness that you see when you actually receive the body. Now we have him here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We are having a storm, big storm here. Yes, yeah, it's okay. No issues. Everything is flying actually. The whole towers are flying. Everything is flying. It's a huge storm out here. Still, you are managing. You are rocking here. Yeah, I'm so good to have you back. Okay, I'll I'll start with uh, where I was. Yes. Sir. The weather is very bad, ma'am. Still here also, it's like... Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Yeah, it's... I think it's very bad weather out there. Yeah. Since morning, it was like that. As long as we have him back, that's okay. He will be back. So, um, like since how many cases you have done ma'am oh, cases like a lot of them which is your challenging case you have faced still now i think the most challenging ones are the ones that we uh, that are unremain unidentified human remains with where it's everything is open you don't know the and skeletonized remains that they derive from the avalanche oh so the only thing that remains is the teeth and there's so many nationals who were missing and uh, the anti-modern data comes by through interpol so you actually sit and break it down and then okay how you are collecting anti-modern and post-modern data ma'am okay anti-modern data database is there for that uh no it depends on the people when they go missing the embassies contacts the department that is the forensic medicine department and uh, that's how they get it even the embassies the interpol everybody sends it there and we sit down and transform it to anti-mortem data and write make anti-mortem this thing in the yellow forms interpol yellow forms and post-mortem we examine in the mortuary and then we do reconciliation and hand it over the bodies if there is a match everybody can see now yes, yes. Sir. Thank you. We're so back. Okay, I'm sorry. There is a uh, there's a huge storm in Delhi right now. Everything is flying. Even the uh, the connections are flying. Everything is flying. So I'm 
I am connected through phone now. Uh, uh, I hope I'm, I'm, uh, I am audible. I am clear to everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, I was talking about growth and development. I'm sorry for the break. Now, what exactly is going on here is that we are discussing that you might get a a, a cast or you might get a the remains of an individual which are not corresponding to the age. He might have uh, the 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 cast or the, the the skull which you get is of the the current situation and the records which you get the OPGs the the details the data which you get might be three year old or five seven year old. Growth must have taken place. So you should keep in mind the proportions the development, everything before you comment on anything. Don't try to be Sherlock Holmes right at the beginning. So these are the, these are the actual, uh, you know, these are the actual uh, diagrams which are done for sup by, by a superimposition which, were, which happened. You should keep in mind what are the cephalocaudal growth, uh, uh, cephalocaudal gradient of growth that head takes around 50% of the total body length in the second month of fetal life and 30% at the time of birth and 12% at the total body length. So you have to keep in mind those proportions when you are doing a build-up. You should know about the facial proportions. You should know about the various studies. You should know about the instruments or uh, tools which have been used by an orthodontist to modify the growth. It can be headgears, uh, which the, the, the parents might give a history or maybe the relatives that uh, embarrassing memories or something they will talk about uh, in the elementary uh, school or maybe teasing uh, because of the headgears. The, the, you, you, need, you, you, you need to know about something called as herbs appliance or maras. See, all these will appear very, very difficult for you. But when, once you involve an orthodontist, the life becomes very easy, very, very easy because they are the people who are playing with the growth actually. And it's very common to have braces nowadays. Why not involve them? Why, why do I have a, uh, you know, a thing that I will do everything? Why not involve people? Why not have a multidisciplinary approach? Now, uh, uh, talking uh, so much, what exactly a face might look like? What exactly, uh, 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 what, what exactly will be the growth which have taken place? It might be a wider uh, face. It might be crooked teeth. It might be smaller airways. It might be straightened teeth. These all will reflect in the in the reconstruction, when you do, you you it might appear uh, that you know these are not very important. But when you are doing a, a, a build up, these relationships of jaws, these relationship of the jaws to the skull, these relationship between intra and inter relationship will play a very vital role when you are doing the 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 development. Uh, if I am, I, I hope my I, I am audible properly because uh, we will be adding information now. Yes, everybody can hear clearly. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So, what is FSTT? That is facial soft tissue thickness data. This is exclusively for your own situation. On your own situation, these are the midline. the The woman name which you are seeing, C K T Taylor. That is the woman which I showed you right at the beginning. The art and the science. She plays a very important role in the art. She has a very beautiful book uh, which is mentioned down. And there are uh, there are uh, the midline points. Then there are the uh, uh, the midline points and the the bilateral points. I need you to really understand there are midline and bilateral points. I know many of you are taking a screenshot, so I'll I'll just keep it there. The screenshots. Screenshots which are there. So. Uh, we can do a lot of work, we can design studies to know the local data which is there because reconstruction will be done as per your ethnicity, as per your local data. You can have uh, uh, the, the class 1 profile, class 2 profile, class 3 profile, the A and B angle will be very important here. Just draw the angle and then you can do the tracings on the lateral self and then you can derive the thickness. This is a primitive way, you can do it on uh, digital ones, you can do on manual ones depending on what kind of uh, errors will be there. Uh, but you need to mention in your studies what exactly happened to the uh, thing. But definitely local data is very important and which is missing. Problems with the cadavers when you're doing, you, you, you can have direct, uh, direct measurements also. You can do 
by uh, by the needle puncture method or the uh, the rubber disc along with the needle method these can be done to know the local thickness of various sites so you i just told you that this are the these are the midline points and these are the bilateral points very important so these will be the pellets these will be the places where the pellets will be placed and you can add uh, if you are doing manual you can add uh, the uh, the clays which are available and when you are doing it on uh, the when you when you are doing it on the directly on the uh, digital thing then you then there is a there is something called as material which is added uh, on a blender or a or a or, or various uh, uh, softwares which we are going to talk about but the problem with the cadaver is that it shrinks etc etc and this is a breakthrough study which is there one of the most beautiful studies um, uh, uh, proud indian study and i am uh, really lucky the second name which is there dr sanjeev uh, is the mentor where i learned 2d reconstruction these are the uh, his wife daisy is actually the anatomy expert who got uh, the data this is the data which is there for the northwest indian adults which was there for the the various sites at which you can add this is a uh, uh, this is the standard data which which is used so very often in reconstruction in indian setup you should know about the nutritional status age gender inclination and ethnicity if you are able to establish uh, these things through and on these basis if you are able to establish the fstt of of a local population nothing like it because your accuracy increases then you should know something about aging what happens the, the vertical wrinkles the lateral wrinkles where how the fat loss is there how the fat gain is there where the modification of fat pads are there you remember out uh, about the uh, the the suckling reflex which is there which due to which there are buckle buckle pads which are there to have a vacuum so that he can suck uh, the the milk that is exactly what is there the buckle fat for so you should know when the buckle fat goes away when buckle fat is there and when uh, uh, you know uh, what is the women uh, look like what a male, male uh, distribution of fat is there these all things might play a very important thing when you are doing a reconstruction triangular what kind of a, when there is a loss there is a wrinkling the the vertical height of the mouth goes down and how does it look like you should know you should be able to give those features when you are making a face you will be playing with these instruments when you are working on a skull uh, you can again take screenshots and find out what exactly these instruments are for a forensic person for a anthropologist these these will it will be a cake walk it will be very simple but for you finding out will be difficult one of them is a is a goniometer one of them is a is a is a vernier caliper one of them is a sliding caliper so search about them and how they work because these will be your instruments when you are doing research or you are doing uh, actual translation of that research on skulls very important what is important here is that you have to have a uh, a sound a sound practice just on the first go if it does it starts looking like a face does not mean it resembles the person who is dead it doesn't mean you are giving a face a wrong face or maybe it does not look like a face even you are creating uh, star trek star trek uh, uh, characters that is not exactly uh, uh, what you were looking for when you were drawing it might look very beautiful you might start giving very good proportions but was the person who died having those proportions so very important how to manage what happens when when you do a facial reconstruction is very important when you, when you uh, how you go about tentative general identification then when the skull is approaches then then you do a tentative uh, skull identification then uh, you establish on the basis of skull gender age stature then you notify the public if relatives come forward well and good you have to do a specific identification and match it with uh, primary identifiers you can do a superimposition you can do fingerprinting you can do uh, dna analysis and establish and then end process but if no relative comes out no nobody comes what you do is keep records and end the process or maybe uh, if the relative is not coming forward you will go for a forensic facial reconstruction give a face now these facial reconstruction can be manual 2d or 3d now 2d can be again digital uh and 3d can also be 
digitalized. So preparation of skull. This is the workflow. Preparation of the skull means reassembling. Uh, I, uh, sorry, you do a digital manual, then you digital. Many of these things will be available online. No need to really uh, be so, uh, you know, so, so disturbed about that. You are not knowing such things. These are very, very easy ones. You can mount the skull, just see for looking for what exactly goes on when you are doing a reconstruction. Uh, you have to clean the skull. You should know how to clean. What are the, what are the material used for cleaning of skulls? You cannot uh, do on a, nowadays, uh, there was a, uh, when the COVID is there, you actually need to know what are the lab rules, what are the forensic rules, uh, how to go about touching the body, how to go about working on the body, how to go about uh, taking care of uh, various uh, non-infectious procedures. There is a, a recent article by Dr. Emilio only, with Dr. Hemlata. You can go about reading it. Um, that has actually uh, uh, very important things on what are the precautions to be used when you are managing uh, uh, the forensic uh, things. So, especially when, uh, in, uh, in the forensic odontology context. Then you need to know how to don't be so in a hurry that you are a, you get up troubled yourself. You should know what is chain of custody. You should see that the skull is not tampered. Uh, that you should know that there is no uh, problem in any kind of uh, uh, the preparation before preparation. Then you should know that you should have all the documents. You should have a roadside road police uh, certificate. Forensic science person will be very important to be involved in this. Forensic medicine, sorry, person will be very important to involve. Don't be in a hurry to not to take help. You might trouble yourself. You might put yourself in uh, a lot of trouble if you are not knowing the rules of the game. Then soil and tissue is removed and then you clean and orient. So how to, first there will be duplication. Now this is when I was learning duplication, uh, manual duplication, uh, this might appear very easy for us. But for a person who is from forensic science, it was very, very important. They were learning it and I thought imagine it the modeling wax, the, the dental stone is all they are playing with. And that's how they replicate a skull. Then you block the undercuts and then you make a rebuild. You build it. This is exactly in my, uh, in my college, I, for superimposition, what to do with a skull. So what you do is, I will, I will overrun the speech. I will speak. What you do is, you mount the cranium on a cra the, the skull on a cranium four. Then the mandible was fixed into the mandible. You, you fix the mandible with the conclusion was set after consultation with an orthodontist. The mandible is fixed with the skull, the cranium base. And then what you have is the skull was the skull is fixed on the cranium and then you have to fix it on a Frankfurt horizontal plane. The pallometric analysis extends on the highest point of the external auditory meatus, which is the porion. porion. And in the inferior orbital margin, the lowest point, which is known as orbital. Now, these two are parallel to the floor which is on the both sides and then it is called to be oriented in FH plane. from the occipital to the maxillon. It's commonly used. So you, what you use is a for establishing this is a. Till the orb. This is a leveler. This contains spirit. This contains Hence. spirit actually. So this, when the spirit is in the center, that means the, the leveler, leveler is in the leveler. Leveler is parallel to the floor of the. Right at the center. So this is uh, available for two hundred rupees. And the skull is it just? You can buy it, and this will be sure how you will orient the skull floor. for photography as well as for. Uh, for various other uh, things, uh, that is the anatomical position of the uh, Frankfurt horizontal plane. There's something called as another plane which is there, that is Kroger Walkman plane. That is. So, this is how you orient a skull, take a picture, then do 3D imaging. You should know what is, when you do a 3D imaging, you should know. Uh, you are studying in in a micro. These are various ways of 3D imaging of a of a skull. You can microscope. That is studying the geometry and manual landmarks 
and it is ready the the and it reads the geometry so what you do is on the skull you mark various positions various places and then what you do is microscribe then there are other ways of photogrammetry or other methods are photogrammetry what you do in photogrammetry is take multiple photographs and then align them and what you do in 3d surface scanning is uh, what you do is uh, that they are the laser or the structured light is put and then what you get is uh, there is something called as uh, polymus that is the us one and the arctic the spider one which i used uh, abroad as well as uh, it is used so very often in india also so this is the uh, the 3d surface scanner which we use and this is being used for implants as well as uh, uh, keeping the records of cast as well in orthodontics this has become a lot of rave now though it is being used so very often now then is confocal confocal are the specific areas uh, uh, these are not required as such for uh, 3d imaging in uh, forensic facial reconstruction but you can build now this has to be kept in mind that anatomy of a 3d model what is it the 3d model has a vertex a edge and a triangle now what is a vertex it is the smallest unit small single 3d unit you are seeing three balls just below so and then there is something called as uh the edge that is connecting the two vertices and then there is a triangle a triangle is formed by three edges uh then you have face then you have the mo the the more number of dots you have the more is the detail and the accuracy and but the the size of the file increases the more the more you are then there is something called as 3d scanning which is done uh 3d scanner just uh you need to know what exactly it does it puts a bleeding it can um it puts puts a, a pulse based also it can be there then there is chair also so these are the exactly uh, then there is something called as uh, the uh, the scanners the dome one this can be done with a phone search for the application there is a, a free a free application download is there you can go about designing studies you can uh, you can even uh, scan tooth nowadays scan cast with this and then give a print to it this is the next engine which is there this is the arctic spider which i was talking about you just hold it in hand and you can scan it and post processing is cleaning repairing and reconstruction of the entire thing and this is what the product you get after scan uh, the the skull scan and then printing it now what exactly happens here is anthropology and first you have to do is the skull preparation was there whether we want to do it digitally or manually you will do the skull preparation now you have to analyze that how do you analyze that the analysis of the thing is done by establishing the dentition the ethnicity the sex and the age everybody can see what exactly is happening you need to know about the contours very important to know as a dentist you will mark when you are doing rebuilding you will take biological notes which are there it is very important the your biological notes will play a key in reconstruction otherwise it will not be scientific what you build up sex determination from skull you have learned about it how a skull looks like when it is male or a female male skull is more squarish uh large prominent now what is act, uh, it is more broad it is uh, it is a, it is having a acute so this the no then you should know about uh, the the styloid process there are six features which are there uh, which have been mentioned skull traits which can be uh, hyper female female male and hyper male now these are notch, uh, notchal lines mastoid process supraorbital margins supraorbital ridges that is the glabella the mental eminence very very important to know all these very very important to know why because uh, see these are is this will help in establishing uh the the sex of an individual because uh, at times it might not be that all features are there but if if you see uh, a mastoid process being 
very very uh, prominent it will decide the ear size if it is very prominent the the progranion will decide the the chin what it looks like bifid chin or not it is very important to know the margins and decide what how much pointed the margins will be the how much uh, material thinning will be there glabella etc now when you when you are doing reconstruction you will realize that these all will be key if you have noted down in your uh biological papers the notes which you make it will be it will play a very very vital thing and it will look like a real one on me when you have such things going on so you have to mark it very female female neutral male very very male so or maybe hyper male we have just we have just uh, in 2018 we have written a book uh where the chapter is there this chapter is written by my colleagues uh now these uh this this chapter uh, if you read uh, you will realize that a lot of orthodontics this is written by an orthodontist also so uh, you will realize how much osteology is being and a forensic science person of course two people were involved in this so this is very important to know uh uh you know uh, what exactly goes on in the in the application of the osteology whatever is uh, the hard structure will be reflected on the soft structure that's what is the basis of this so uh, socio uh, ethnic uh, anthropological groups copoid um, then there is negroid mongoloid astroloid uh, basically we will deal with the first three only first three are occasion negroid mongoloid or in other words european african and asian that's how we tend to remember it everybody is listening i uh, i don't see anything on the chat so um, i hope everything is clear yes sir everything is clear sir so we proceed yes sir okay so how the ethnicity will be established see um, now it is uh, as i said now we are a uh, Global person. Everybody is a global person. Any anybody can be found anywhere. Uh, an 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 Nepalese person can be found in India. Indian person can be found in um, uh, you know uh, in Europe. A European person can be found in Australia or Australian person can be found in uh, Asia. So we need to know how a Negroid skull or a Caucasian uh, or a Mongoloid skull uh, looks like. very wide nose uh flat or uh, what kind of a dentition is prominent uh, where do you see bimaxillary protrusion where do you see a uh, very prominent gonial angle where do you see boxy um boxy orbits angular orbits where do you see tortuous cranial sutures where do you see a a, a tent like nose where do you see um facial the flat nasal spine all these will be critical when you are noting i'm not going uh, you know it will be beyond the scope to tell actually how to determine it is separate uh, training which is there so you need to you need to learn those things which you forgot in first year about what a skull should look like when it is a male a female and what it should look like when it is a caucasian a uh, mongoloid or a uh, a negroid we from india are very heterogeneous we might have few features of some and few features of some so you need to know what a depressed glabella is and what a a rounded orbit is so because that should reflect those features should the glabella feature should reflect in your face you should know about cranial index dolichocephalic brachiocephalic long headed medium headed short headed now why do you need to know them the cranial and the facial index is very important because they will decide the face the narrow face the medium face and the wide face very very important to know because these will determine the how the person face will be looking like 
exactly what I, we are seeing. This is a workshop. This is from a workshop which we did. What a face will look like. A narrow face, a round face. I think these pictures will wake you up. A lot of grossness I have shown. Now these are these are beautiful faces. Will buy might wake you up. Don't ask me names of uh, the person are there because you will be knowing the biography more than me. So, what exactly goes on? How it looks like? How the age progresses? It is very important to know the age from the skull, right? So we have determined what the sex, the ethnicity. Now comes the age, which is. Again, technical, it depends on the suture. You should know how a suture, fused suture looks like, how the infant skull looks like, how the sutures evolve and fuse, how you determine the age, how, at what age the landoid suture fuses, uh, the sagittal, the coronal, the lambdoid, the squamous, I know every many of you are noting down. So you should keep in mind what to learn. I'm just giving you keywords. The cranial feet sutures to be learned are sag uh, sagittal, coronal, lambdoid, and uh, squamous portion of temporal bone fuses with the parietal bone. That is exactly the four of them are there 32 years of age, 40, 45, 60. That will determine the ages, the age of an individual, the, the anterior fraternale, when they fuses. Uh, at uh, the condylar portion of the occipital bone fuses with the squamous part of the petrol, uh, the petrous temporal bone. These all three years, one, one and a half years, five years. These will be very vital because uh, these are the few ages where uh, the skulls might be reported to you. Then the determining the age from the mandible, very important because the mental foramen goes down, the size of the, uh, the elbow sockets reduces etc etc gonial angle also might be help, helpful here body ramus mental foramen condyle these are the features once you know about the the cranial profiling is done the the cranial facial profiling is done preparation anthropological anth uh, the the forensic approximation has to be done forensic facial approximation is the process of rebuilding by the help of 2D facial reconstruction or 3D facial reconstruction. 2D reconstruction can be radiographical or graphical. 3D can be manual or computerized. The computerized is having various softwares. You can see down, I have worked on few. The haptic feedback is where the, the, the computer can touch. You can touch the skull by the help of a pen, uh, the, which is there. I will show you the picture, which is there. You can go about seeing my Instagram or YouTube videos. It is given how it looks like that was a training joined in Germany, not, not inherited now till now in Delhi or uh, India, but uh, in future, maybe it will be done. Manually, various cases have happened. China Bora, facial reconstruction. Uh, what are the methods used? Are Gresimovs, Gatlev, Neve. One is a, uh, 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 all these three are manual ones. They can be tried uh, on the skull. So this is the makeup. You have a 2D re facial reconstruction, a 3D, 2D being radiographical, graphical, manual, the 3D being manual and computerized. Russian combination and anthropological, anthro anthropometric. So what are the manual? Manual ones, determine the sex of the age, cutting the depth markers. I have shown you depth markers. We put various, these are the Caucasian data. We can have your local data, and then we start to build nodes. Here, Christopher Ran is a person who has worked on it. You should know, read about it. Um, hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. You can go ahead. Okay. okay. So, uh, these are various ways. Resume of Progman uh, and you can develop your own nose formulas in your, this is a gap of literature, which is there. I Surprisingly, there is no nose formula for Indians. And maybe if somebody wants to collaborate, all open, all open for uh, nose studies. Nose is the maximum places where uh, you go wrong. So if you have a good nose, the face will come out well. So these are the various methods we can learn how to go about making nose. 
this is george um, people are taking screenshots i know so you, you can read about this uh, uh, this article which is there which i have marked you can read read that article and out of them gresmo will be the most important one i use gresmo when uh, rebuilding nodes uh, you can use uh, you can use combination of various uh, methods and then you can get a more closer nodes to the real one various types of nodes are there how a caucasian nose looks like how a flat nose looks like how the tent looks like various you can contact me at various other platforms and learn about how to making nose or maybe based on nose on a let just a level stuff is required and we can have a study on it you can do it on um you can do it by softwares also this is maybe the reconstructions happening on softwares the problem is with the these differential facial approximation is that there is insufficient uh, thickness data then there is subjective nature there is methodological inconsistency inconsistency because uh, people are not knowing and uh, that still practicing they are not knowing the science they are doing art or they are doing too much of science too much of science or too much of art will lead to as i said lot of trouble then there is lack of reliability and stand, standardization of the scientific method various methods are still being scientified uh, uh, are being uh, validated um the germany tubingen university which i went is one of them and the, uh, there is a university in uk which is uh, doing manchester university is doing where uh, they are doing uh, uh, class apart work the state of an art work which they are doing so 3d work 3d uh, there you to there is envelus then there is um, c3d then there is make human haptic feedback free form modeling blender composite and z brush so uh, these are the places where you can work upon i have worked upon haptic feedback uh, you can it was used for architectures now it is being used here free form modeling this is the haptic device which i use i use text uh, now this has a very uh, pivotal hand movement which is there then you can you have to import the 3d data to 2d software to uh, d2p software so just before i wind up you should know that there are skull charts available you can take it from me you can search online then uh, there are uh, uh, aviso software which is there which is used to convert dicom file to an stl file you work on stl file you cannot work on dicom file stm file uh, are the uh, um uh, the softwares which can be other softwares which can be used uh, for, uh, apart from uh, aviso is uh, amira mimix and trust and this uh, thing it's done on a gom software um ran and grasimos should be tried on your population um for nose the clay used for uh, reconstruction is champman nsp 3 kg uh just to mention uh just to mention uh is c h i'm typing it c h a v a n t 3 kg of it nsp so this can be used uh, for reconstruction if you are doing manual ones the eyeballs are available which can be used uh when you are doing a mini uh, Uh, the manual one the size of it is 24 mm in size you should uh, when you are buying it see to it uh, the they are available with the opt optometrist uh, ophthalmologist also you can go about asking him where you can buy uh, you should know um, that these should be kept 3.8 mm out of the eyeball socket Uh, then there are uh, where is it available you can buy it from again i will type it you can buy it from g l a s v a g a n last wagon uh, all, all trunk trunk twisters that's the reason i'm typing and you guys might get help you can contact me if you you are stuck somewhere because you will be stuck so very often we learn the hard way i'll smoothen it out for you if you are interested in this reconstruction it might uh, who knows that uh, you
basically lot of science uh, is involved uh, i need to show i can show you a few cases grossly but uh, you know um, i i'm just telling you these cases are there which we researched developed manually either this is one of the cases uh, where the red body was thrown and then we we did a reconstruction opinion see thank you to who is an orthodont opinion on uh, what does it like how the face the mouth support will be there the tooth support will be there how it will look like then this is the case of superimposition then we organize workshops on uh, rugoscopy dacc that is the demergent chart for age estimation we do workshops on uh, uh, maybe when covid ends we will be doing reconstruction uh, and showing you how to go about this contact i'm sorry i had really at times i uh, skipped uh, because of really really lot of uh, air was everybody can hear me yes sir yes 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 uh we are open to discussion if somebody has some questions can ask or uh, dr samarika can step in now yes any questions so many they are asking about the symposium thing sir so i think emilio sir can answer yes so what is the let me let me change the video okay symposium they want to ask september anything else till dr emilio joins well i'm glad they are asking for the symposium but <laughs> i am um, i would like colleagues to address questions to professor choudhry please dr emilio is stuck till the time we get questions you can ask uh, you can uh, explain about the symposium coming up the september 1 uh so do you want me to let me read let me read okay let me read mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. well the symposium is going to be online there is i have shared on the chat the pre-registration link it's a form where you have to write down your interest in attending it and uh, initially we were uh, going to have it physical uh, i we were uh, going to have it in mumbai i was ready to take a flight uh, so but unfortunately as you know the situation has a little bit changed and uh, it will go online we will have also some workshops and uh, uh, the deadline for the submission of abstract will be the 5th of august and um, we are discussing the keynote speakers 
uh, we had uh, already several colleagues who said were available, but now we have to consider that we have changed a little bit the program because of the online uh, modality. Uh, if you follow the website or if you register on the form I've shared in the chat box, you will receive updated uh, information. I would like to congratulate uh, Professor Chaudhry for the excellent presentation. I had no doubt he would have uh, satisfied all expectations. So thank you, Aman. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Amelia. Got a question. I think there are like, questions coming. Uh, yes, areas of research where we can attempt regarding ethnicity. Ah, uh, I think uh, out of the three profiling or the four profiling which we do from Skull, the ethnicity will be uh, 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 will have lots of actually it has lots of gaps. The gaps being created by uh, various caste system. There is something called as ASUDIAS caste system, which is there, which is, it utilizes the tooth, that is Arizona State Dental University caste system, which is there. Uh, it was Richard Scott who invented this in, um, uh, maybe it completed 50 years uh, of its existence. Um, you can go about using that, that is uh, one of the areas of ethnicity. Then uh, ethnicity on the skull, if I see uh, an anthropologist is best equipped for designing the ethnicity, of telling the ethnicity. Why? Because he knows what a tent look like, what will be the broader nose look like, uh, how the flat uh, face looks like, how, uh, and it becomes, uh, you know, very easy for a, a person who is from uh, uh, ethnic background. Uh, now, if you ask me about the research areas, see, you require a multi-centric study here, and it can be done in India itself, because we are having a mongoloid population, we mm -hmm. are having somewhat, I'm, I'm being a I should not be quoted as a racist here, but I am being an anthropologist. So I am telling you, we are more towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, a mixed heterogeneous breed, but then you can have a uh, European data compared with uh, some, something like East, East Indian or mm -hmm. maybe South Indian. There can be various, uh, you know, uh, studies which can happen. So a lot of, lot of scope of studies is there. You can have a local, I will advise the most important thing is you have a local data to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, have a general local data uh, to yourself. That will be the best research which you do. That will be the best contribution you can do. You should have a, a local data which is there. And such symposium which are happening uh, will be key here because a lot of data is generated and presented here. Uh, if you have a central repository and you are using those datas, uh, you will get a very good reconstruction as well as it will be helpful in forensics as well, forensic dentistry as well. And uh, th I think there is one more question. Yes, sir. Like It uh, is about ACDS only. Yes. Are we still following SDAS method or is there any simpler or economical modified methods? ASUDS method has been uh, there for 50 years, as I said. Now is the time is is the uh, is the CASUDS, that is a computerized uh, ASUDIA system, which is there, which is very, very important. You will see recently two, three publications on it. And uh, I, again, that we, we invite people to work on it. Uh, my hands are tied. Actually, I've taken so many projects. So uh, my hands are tied, but I'll be happy to help someone who takes, who volunteers for ASUDIAS. ASUDIAS cast, I'm lucky to have ASUDIAS class cast with me in my university. The, the, the bar is open. The, the thing is open for everyone. You can uh, use those ACDS cast and uh, utilize it for your own local population. You just need to have cast, take it from an orthodontist, take 100 cast, 200 cast, have a pilot attempt and uh, know which traits are the crown traits of tooth are available, are repeating. Especially, I will tell you, uh, the cusp of carabli itself can be a single study. Uh, shoveling of teeth can be a separate study. Now we are going more towards forensic odontology. We are not going towards where I want you to lead, actually. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Actually, I have a question. Like uh, now, uh, comparing to manual method, how uh, the like uh, 3D printings and all, how it is useful, sir? It is really like I just wanted to know. When I went to Germany to Osgood or I interact with people, the first thing they tell ask me is how many years you have been doing manual? Mm -hmm. I said uh, two years. You come after one more year. At least spend one good year in doing that. So 
jumping to that expensive part because that is just a luxury this is necessity you know you should know anthropology you should know the basics you should know what is the feel of a uh, mouth what is the feel of the skin how much is the thickness how a male skull start uh, comparing faces uh, i think dr emilio has an article of uh, you know identity biometrics of uh, smile and uh, he has uh, some some id project he has started that will be that is exactly the basis of biometrics you should be uh, being a forensic person you should be able to fix faces and that is most important i think spend time in manual then think about uh, uh, very advanced techniques like uh, 3d reconstruction by digitalization which itself requires lots of investment since we have mixed the population how can we uh, specify a single person sir like since we have mixed with so many we are we are, we are heterogeneous yes but we are individual we have established our individuality throughout two years so if you see this part we require we have inherited features of everything we have inherited features of everything we are peculiar we need thickness data of our own that is the most important whether it is dentistry whether it is anthropology we require data of because europe has done itself europe has its data america has its data brazilian population has its data uh, asian population is is having its data but we are not counted in purely in asian we are not having mongoloid features at all i am not having mongoloid much features and uh, uh, so and most of us look like me only and we are not 5 feet we start we end at 5 feet 5 5 6 our face structures are like that and european where i went to croatia i was a uh, i was a, i was dealing with giants and i was a lilliput there so th this is the difference between the stature so uh, you need to understand that uh, very important to know the stature of the bones as well as the teeth don't go blindly reading wheelers yeah wheelers is having data which is uh, european or caucasian you are not supposed to follow that you will start building up 13.5 uh, size of the crown it will start touching the upper crowns so your restoration will be wrong first of all yes sir and i think the questions that's all two members we have asked the questions we wish to see you in uh, the symposium and various uh, various things you need to socialize we are present Dr. Emilio is present. I am present uh, socially on almost every network. And don't uh, blame us later on when you miss the last dates. Uh, we will keep on updating. We will keep on telling you what is going on. So uh, you have nobody to blame later on. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think this is our second uh, webinar we are doing, sir. I mean, sir. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Emilio. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Emilio. Thank you, Dr. Samarika. Thank you, Dr. Abrami. And yes, thanks sir. everyone for joining and for your questions which you asked. Uh, thank you, Emilio, sir. Nice to meet you here. Since you are busy. Nice to meet you too. Gave... Yes, since you are busy, you gave a date for us. Thank you so much, sir. We are happy to have you, you. as a part of Savita Dental College also. And thank you, Samarika, ma'am. And thank you, Amin, sir. you are the big support today <laughs> you managed Pleasure. everything Pleasure. you managed everything Pleasure is mine. Uh, actually storm managed everything right now i don't know where my kids have flown where my wife has flown <laughs> where everything has flown i now we collect everyone <laughs> yes sir definitely definitely sir thank you thank you, you. Thank you dr aman thank you dr emilio and thank you abrami for having me it's so good to be reconnected and see emilio after so long and to be able to chat thank you Yeah, ma'am. And I'll present the certificate, sir. Since uh, sir was not able to do it, so I'll just do this. I think my video got stuck. No, so my video got stuck. So I'm so sorry. Okay, you want me to? You want me to? Yeah, present? sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, wait then.
I'll do that. Okay, we have the certificates now. Dr. Emilio, I hope you're taking screenshot. <laughs> I will. Okay. Whatever I'll send you, sir. No issues. Ah, okay. Yeah. And that's for me. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Raman, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Samarika. Thanks for moderating and keeping uh, me occupied in in the storm. And I think, uh, Dr. Abrami, you missed your own certificate here. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, sir. No issues. You make for your own self then. Yes, yeah, sir. I will. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. See you soon. Ciao, Samarika. Ciao, Aman. See you soon, sir. Thank you. Bye, Bye. sir.